What's up, my dudes? This somehow felt appropriate to film in a kitchen. Uh, you read the title, so I'm just gonna dive into things. I'm here to answer two very simple questions. What is eating in a world-class restaurant like, and is it worth it? I laugh to this day because I cannot believe this happened. The restaurant in question here is Osteria Francescana, which is run by the one and only Massimo Bottura. He's pretty famous in Italy. Uh, the, the only reason I even know about this restaurant actually is thanks to the show Chef's Table. That's a separate story on its own, but it's a show that had a particular impact on me. I just really loved the cinematography and the music and the storytelling in that show. And the very first episode is on this restaurant and on Massimo. And I think from that moment, when I watched it a few years ago on, it was something that, I don't know, I had a little curiosity about things in the back of my mind. When I say best restaurant in the world, I'm not exaggerating at all. So as you can imagine, demand for a restaurant like this is quite high. So let's rewind to where the story begins, okay? Last summer, I was living in Mexico City. And at that point, I had decided I wanted to spend several months in Italy. And so purely out of curiosity, I, you know, as one does, I went on the internet and began doing a little bit of research on what it takes to get a reservation to a restaurant like this. And let me tell you, no matter how much research I did, there was so much conflicting information out there that it was just, it ended up becoming an adventure of its own. The reason I ended up seriously considering this is because I brought up the idea to a French friend of mine, Océane, who was living in the Netherlands at the time, and she was totally down. She was like, I'll buy a ticket and fly down to Italy uh, and have this experience with you. And I was like, oh my God, yes. Cause it's not the kind of thing that, that I wanted to do by myself. So here's what it took to get the reservation. On the first Monday of every month, they release all the reservations for three months in advance at exactly 10 a.m. Italian time. Okay, so for example, if you wanted to get a reservation in November, you have to reserve in August, which is exactly what I did. Now, 10 a.m. Italian time is 3 a.m. Mexico City time. So about an hour before, everything has to be done online. I get online, I get on the website, and I get in the queue. And I remember having queue number 1,803 or something like that. And you have to keep in mind, this restaurant only has 12 tables um, and they only do two services a day. So right off the bat, like it felt like my odds of actually getting a spot were really, really low. But this ended up becoming sort of like a teamwork sort of situation. Ocean was also uh, in the queue from Europe. We had several browsers open each. We were trying to give ourselves the best odds. Turns out none of that even mattered because as we got closer and closer, the nerves, the tension built up, but as 10 a.m. Italian time struck, okay, it's 3 a.m. where I was, it's like all hell broke loose. I don't know what exactly happened. I think the website couldn't handle the amount of people that were trying to queue in. <laughs> I could tell that the website wasn't working, so I started frantically refreshing and getting different random spots in the queue. I jumped from like 1,803 to 300, and then up to 1,200. It was just all over the place. I was completely unsuccessful in getting reservations. So if it was something that I was just trying to do by myself, that would have been the end of the story. But Ocean, thank you, Ocean. She got through, very quickly called me. I gave my credit card info so that we could reserve the spot. It was a total situation of teamwork, v totally beautiful. Oh my God. Oh my God. Holy smokes, we got a reservation for Osteria Francescana. Holy shit. Confirm your reservation for two persons on Saturday, November 16th at 12.30 p.m. Oh my God. And then I went straight to bed because I was exhausted. To be completely honest with you, I, I don't even know how it worked out or why, um, but I'm not gonna question it. So fast forward three months, I'm living in Milan. Ocean comes down, she flies down for the weekend, and we take a train to go to Modena, which is where this restaurant is, obviously. First of all, let me just say that Modena is a very beautiful little town. It's worth the trip all on its own. But obviously we were there with a mission. È semplicemente fantastico per me poter visitare questo posto senza tutti i turisti, perché non è così comune visitarlo eh, a novembre. Per me è più facile apprezzare 
la città, l'architettura e tutto. We get to the location on Google Maps and all you really see is a plaque that says Osteria Francescana, but it doesn't feel like a conventional entrance to a restaurant by any means. Somebody opens the doorway for us to enter. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. Hi everyone and welcome. Welcome to We enter and I am immediately, I feel incredibly uncomfortable. I feel like a total fish out of water, like, like I didn't even know what to do with my hands or feet or face, to be honest with you. It was so fancy, so nice, so clean, and there's like 12 waiters all there waiting for you, welcoming you, they're all saying hello, they all seem like really nice people. And I'm wearing like my backpack, I have a camera in my hands. Oh my God, I felt so self-conscious. So there was a very awkward moment there where I, I think what I wanted to try and do was like vlog the whole experience, but it ended up looking incredibly awkward and amateurish. So yeah, that was, ugh, that was really uh, not my proudest moment. So the waiters immediately, they're taking your jacket, they're taking your backpack, they're just like taking care of you, and they led us down the hallway. It feels like I'm exaggerating things, but I'm really not. I had blood rushing through my ears, and I was just, I don't know, I just don't have that much experience in really fancy, nice places. So they take us to our table, and they're seating us, and you know, like I'm not used to that action of them coming around you and pushing in your seat for you. I have never had that be done for me before. It's very strange. Very quickly, I began to understand why an experience like this could cost as much money as it does. I know a lot of people get offended at the idea of spending hundreds of dollars for a single meal. It's very similar in concept, I suppose, to going to a festival or a concert or something. You're going for a, a unique experience. And this truly was a, the kind of experience you can't really get anywhere else at all. The design is beautiful. Everybody's speaking in quiet voices. I felt fancy. You know, I dressed up for the occasion. I'm not really much of a fancy dresser. I mean, I usually am wearing t-shirts, but I, I made my best effort. So Ocean and I both got the tasting menu. I would recommend it if you're ever going to have this sort of experience just once. You get to taste a bunch of different little dishes. I also got the wine pairing and to be honest with you, I know practically nothing about wine, but I figured, you know what? I may never have this opportunity ever again. I'm gonna go for it. So they pair wine with every single one of the dishes. And if you think about it, that is a lot of alcohol. I felt really bad when I didn't finish glasses of wine because it felt like expensive wine that I wasn't drinking. But every time I did finish a glass that went with a particular dish, you know, if it was a glass that I really liked, the sommelier would come over and refill it. And I was like, dude, no, no, I, no more alcohol. I really wanted to test these guys. So um, I requested tissues. That was one of the first things that I requested. I was like, what can I ask? Immediately, one of the head waiters sends one of the other waiters off to get the tissues for me. Um, and of course, the way they came back presenting it to me was three folded tissues on a small plate that they placed on the table. And not only that, and this is gonna really show you the attention to detail here. Once I used the tissues, at some point later on in the meal, they came back and replaced them. It really was like incredible service, far and away beyond what anybody really needs. Um, but it's fun to be, that's, I think that's what people pay for, you know, to be treated very, very well, to be taken care of. It personally made me a little bit uncomfortable. I don't need that much service. They're taking care of that whole experience that you can really just focus on the food and the flavors and everything. Of course, I cannot talk about this entire experience without addressing the food. The food is absolutely delicious, but that's really not the point. There's a lot of delicious food in the world. Not even just that, you can get really delicious food for very cheap. So this is not about having the most delicious food that you've ever had in your life. I go back to that point that I made earlier, which is that you're going for an experience. And that's what these dishes felt like. They felt like concepts. You're tasting flavors and combinations that it feels like you've never tasted before. And many times throughout the meal, I really couldn't believe certain combinations were even possible. I was wondering how they even came up with these concepts. Now, I don't know what it's like in every Michelin starred restaurant out there, but accusations that you end up leaving a restaurant like this hungry are completely 
not based in reality. I mean, in my experience, there was an enormous amount of food. We were sitting there eating for like four or five hours. We walked in, like I said, at around noon and we came out and it was dark already outside. So that really shows you how long this experience lasts. The tasting menu had something like 12 or 13 dishes and they would come out every 20 minutes or so. And you know, the cost is definitely high, right? It was close to 300 euros for the tasting menu and another 200 or so to pair it with wine. But if you think about what you're getting for that amount of money, I never felt like I was cheated or that it wasn't worth it. Personally, I've never spent anywhere near this much on a single meal. I've gone on entire trips for less money than this. So it's definitely not something that I can see myself doing all the time. I consider myself very fortunate to have been able to have this experience. I personally would rather spend money this way than to go to, you know, like a concert or a festival where there's a ton of people and a ton of noise and you're always surrounded by that. That's just not fun for me. I don't know, it was just a really cool way to be able to share something with one person intimately, you know? And like, I get it. I, I can see how, like food really connects people. There was one point early on in the meal where everybody's voices suddenly got very quiet. I remember looking around trying to see what was going on and Massimo himself actually came out to greet everybody. This was something I was completely not expecting. You have to realize that he's a busy guy. And so he comes to each table talking to everybody. I wanted to speak to him in Italian. That's kind of how I operate uh, when I learn languages. I find reasons to learn the language and he was one of them. For me, he comes across as this really cool, very charismatic Italian and he just makes Italian seem really cool. You know, so I wanted to converse a little bit, say what I could in Italian, you know? I remember saying that to him. I was like, hey, can I just say a few words to you in Italian? And this will show you the kind of person that he is. He was like, well, but she, he's referencing Ocean, she doesn't understand Italian, so why would you do that? You know, he wanted to be really inclusive, but he did it in a nice way, you know, his, his energy was good. So yeah, I just, I expressed my admiration. I asked him a few questions and then, you know, I didn't want to bug him, but the fact that we got a photo together was, Ugh, amazing, so cool, what a cool guy. I'll be the first to admit that I did not understand half of what the waiters were saying. Uh, they had very thick accents, but I think the concept is that they're trying to tell stories with these dishes about the local area and using local ingredients and telling a story of Italy and Modena and you know current events. Now, if you're offended by the prices, I don't blame you. I understand that it's a totally difficult thing to wrap your head around. And I myself have been very critical, like the whole world of haute cuisine, right? But this really felt like something that I'm gonna remember for a very long time. It was enjoyable, it was very novel, and it was exciting. And you know, Massimo and the whole team that works at the restaurant really know how to give you a special experience. So yeah, was it worth it? It's a good question. It's a privilege to be able to do things like this. I got lucky to have this opportunity and I do not regret it. So yeah, was it worth it? Absolutely. I totally think it was worth it. Thank you for watching. I try not to ask too often, but if you'd like to see more of my videos, consider subscribing and all the other stuff. See you soon.